Hey everyone, so a couple weeks ago I wrote about how much I love resistance bands when you're training at home or traveling, they're just super functional and really, really easy to use. And today I thought I would go through four of my favorite resistance bands exercises so that you knew how to do them, what they are, and why they rock. So I'm going to use three bands today. Um, we have a, a red strength band, a purple strength band, and a green mini band. I travel everywhere with these bands. I absolutely love them. You can do quite a few exercises with them, which gives you a really good workout. And truthfully, they're just easy. So they're easy to take with me, easy to use, and easy to give me a great workout. So the first exercise I want to show you is a bent over row. One of the problems with training at home is, even body weight, is you can't work your back muscles. And back muscles are really important for moms because our posture gets a little bit wonky between pregnancy and holding a baby, we tend to round forward. So the stronger our back muscles are, the more we're going to stand upright and help pull our shoulders back which results in less back pain and back muscles are pretty. So what I want you to do is you're going to step on the band and you're coming into a bent over position. So making sure that my back is flat, I'm not rounded and I'm not squatting. From here, get your desirable tension so whether your feet are wider or more narrow. And then you're going to roll your arms up, pinch your shoulder blades, pause and release. And roll them up, pause, pinch and release. So a couple things that you don't want to do are to round your back. So this isn't, isn't going to work your back muscles, it's just gonna hurt them. What you wanna do is make sure that you are flat back, sticking out your bum, and keeping a neutral head or neck alignment so that your neck isn't cocked up. Okay, so pull and release. Okay, so making sure when you do that pull back that you're actually pausing at the top and not just jerkily going back and forth. So the next exercise I wanted to show you is a band shoulder press with pull apart. So we overlook shoulders a lot in training programs and truthfully not a lot of us hang out with our hands overhead. It's one of the old wives tales that if you don't use it you will lose it and I find that really really true. So you do want to make sure you're taking your shoulders through a full range of motion. This exercise not only does this, just that, it adds a little bit of resistance and it targets your back muscles with a pull apart. So you're going to come into a wrapped position. And what that means is standing on the band you're going to take your elbows in between the band. This is your starting point, right underneath your chin. So in this position, the closer my feet are, the easier the press will be and the wider, the harder, because it creates more tension. You're not leaning forward. So you have a nice upright posture. You're going to press the band up, lock out to the top, so bring my shoulders back to my biceps, and pull apart, bringing my shoulders down from my ears, my arms out wide. Come back up to the top, and come down. Okay, so press up. Pull it apart, back up, and down. A couple of mistakes I see people making is when they press up, they are pressing out to here. Try, depending on your shoulder mobility, try to get your arms, your biceps to line up with your ears. This is called a locked out position. From here though, we are not leaning forward, so we are very, very upright with a nice neutral back. On the pull apart, it's not flexing your elbows, it is opening up your arms and feeling your shoulders go down your back. Okay, so this is your pull apart, not this, and not hinging backwards, because that's just going to cause sore shoulders. So from the back, what this looks like, this is your wrapped position, you press up, pull apart, come back, and come down. Okay, so exercise number three is going to use this mini band, and I love the mini band. The mini band is the one I use the most whenever I'm targeting glutes. So today we are going to do a banded squat, so you're going to take this band, and loop it around your legs. Now, it can be below your knees or above them. I personally find a little bit more tension when I go below my knees. Sometimes I use two bands just to get a little bit more of a glute squeeze. And you're gonna do a banded squat. So whenever you squat, I want you to think of sinking back, but I also want you to think of driving your knees out. Too often we see this in a squat, and that's really, really bad for your knees. It causes a lot of pain. So the band forces you to drive out against it using your glutes to do so. Your glutes are responsible for external rotation. So as you sink down, I'm driving out against that band, pausing, and coming up. So again, driving out, pause, come up. Make sure the weight does stay in your heels, okay? So you're not leaning forward, coming onto the tips of those toes. And you just want to keep a nice neutral back. So you're only going as low as your back allows. Meaning if I come down to here, and then all of a sudden I round my back, that's probably a little bit too deep for your mobility. You want to make sure you have a nice neutral back coming down, grabbing those knees out, pause, 
I come up. So you do have to use your bottom muscles, specifically in the bottom position. So when you are down here, we don't want to see this line, these knees caving in where they're on the inside of our toe. We want to use our glutes to drive them out. Okay, so then you're going to push up. All right, so the last exercise that we're going to go over is a resistance band deadlift. So I'm sure you've heard of deadlifts. They're probably a very big scary move for most of you, but this one is a very, very tame one. I love deadlifts. They don't have to be heavy, but I do love them for two reasons. They teach a proper hip hinge position. Hip hinging is super important as a mom because we're constantly bending over. So if we are bending over like this, eventually we're going to injure our backs. But learning how to break at your hips, keeping a flat back is what uses your posture, your team, which you need, and then coming up, it'll prevent injuries, plus deadlift strengthen your posture and your chain, so everything along your backside. Okay, so I like to use the purple one for this, but I would suggest starting with the red one until you feel comfortable. You're going to double band the band and wrap it along your feet. So I'm gonna show you a side view here. Okay, so you're gonna take your feet wide enough against that band that you feel tension in your hips, all right? From there, I want you to hip hinge. So I want you to think of a hip hinge two ways. Keeping a flat back and sinking your weight backwards. So I'm not just falling over with the weight in the balls of my feet. I'm actually pushing my body backwards to come down. So in this position, my knees are slightly flexed. They are not hyperextended, but I am also not squatting. And my back is nice and flat. So I'm not rounding forward to reach for that band. Okay, so I hinge down. I grab one part of the band. And then keeping my hips lower than my shoulders, I'm going to squeeze my glutes and really thrust through my hips. So up, thrust, hinge down, thrust. Okay, so in this position, as I'm sinking down, breaking at the hips, I feel a nice lengthening my hamstrings. So I'm stretching out my hamstrings here. Then I'm driving through my heels to come up with a flat back, leading with my hips, and finishing with a glute squeeze. Okay, so coming down, up. Thrust. Mastering the hip hinge position is very, very important just to function daily and prevent injury. So anything that strengthens the posterior chain is amazing for you and bands help you do that at home. So those are my top four resistance bands exercise. I use them all the time. I'm constantly growing and deadlifting. Give them a shot and let me know what you think.